In their main goal to get a handle on the first stars and galaxies that illuminated the universe, cosmologists are still in haziness, regardless of moving closer to illumination one disclosure at a time. This is the inevitable end from wonderful discoveries by the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, the $10 billion time machine that just completed its first year of insights. It aims to capture the faint infrared shimmer of the universe's earliest radiant articles. Webb's vision wandered into the initial few hundred million years after the Big Bang, allowing it to gather more and better data about baby universes than any other observatory yet. Its hall of infinite young pictures has yielded more than most researchers dared to hope. Recently, candidate frameworks in the early universe have been found in numbers that defy expectations, prompting experts like Charlotte Brickley, an astrophysicist at the University of Copenhagen, to exclaim, we genuinely weren't expecting this. In the extended time following JWST's revelations of surprisingly mature early frameworks, researchers and observers scrambled to make sense of them. Could the peculiar, huge, and bright early universes be an artifact of the telescope's assessment, or could they be accounted for by standard cosmological models? Alternatively, could they be the first clues that the universe is more unusual and complex than our boldest theories ever imagined? Join us today as we delve into how the James Webb Space Telescope revolutionized our understanding of the universe. Let's understand the complexity and revisit the time when the universe was thought to have been outlined after the Big Bang. Following the Big Bang, the infant universe started cooling. Several million years later, the searing plasma that consumed space settled down, and electrons, protons, and neutrons combined into atoms, mostly hydrogen. Things were quiet and dark during this period known as the Dark Ages. Then something happened. The majority of the material that spread apart after the Big Bang is made of something we can't see called dark matter. It has a strong influence over the universe, especially at the beginning. In the standard model, cold dark matter, referring to invisible or slow particles, was scattered randomly across the universe. In denser regions, it began collapsing into clusters. Visible matter, i.e., atoms, bundled around the clusters of dark matter as they cooled and eventually densified, leading to the birth of the first stars. These new sources of radiation reionized the neutral hydrogen that filled the universe during the period known as reionization. Through gravity, larger and more complex structures formed, building a vast cosmic web of galaxies. Meanwhile, everything continued to fly apart. The universe is expanding rapidly, as astronomer Edwin Hubble discovered in the 1920s, and in the late 1990s, his namesake, the Hubble Space Telescope, found evidence that this expansion is accelerating. Consider the universe as a piece of raisin bread. It starts as a mixture of flour, water, yeast, and raisins. As the yeast ferments, the dough rises, causing the raisins to move further apart. Similarly, the universe's expansion is like the rising dough with galaxies moving apart as the dough expands. The Hubble telescope observed that the dough is rising much faster than expected, with galaxies moving apart at a rate that defies their gravitational attraction. This acceleration is driven by dark energy, represented by the Greek letter lambda. Plugging values for cold dark matter, ordinary matter, and radiation into Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity equations gives a model of how the universe evolves. This lambda cold dark matter, LCDM, model matches almost all observations of the universe. One way to test this model is by looking at very distant galaxies, essentially peering back in time to the first few hundred million years after the Big Bang. Initially, astronomers tried to see the earliest galaxies using the Hubble telescope. In 1995, over 10 days, Hubble took 342 exposures of an empty-looking patch of space in the Big Dipper, revealing thousands of galaxies at various distances, stretching back to much earlier times than anyone expected. Hubble continued to find some of the most distant galaxies. In 2016, astronomers found its most distant galaxy, GNZ 11, a faint smudge dating to around 400 million years after the Big Bang. This was incredibly early for a galaxy, but it didn't fit well with the LCDM model partly because the galaxy was small with only 1% of the Milky Way's mass and partly because it was an outlier. Astronomers needed a more powerful telescope to see if GNZ 11 was an anomaly or part of a larger population of puzzling early galaxies, which could help determine if a significant piece of the LCDM puzzle was missing. 
This is why the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, was built. As the largest and most powerful observatory ever launched from Earth, JWST was designed to transform our understanding of the universe. Located 1.5 million kilometers away from Earth's interference and cooled close to absolute zero by its tennis court-sized sunshield, the telescope features a giant segmented mirror and highly sensitive instruments designed to reveal details of the cosmic dawn never before seen. The promise was kept as the first discoveries were made within weeks of JWST's full operations, far exceeding cosmologists' wildest dreams. It has seen galaxies close to the earliest periods of cosmic history, probed exoplanet atmospheres in exquisite detail, and provided stunning new views of our own solar system. However, it's just getting started. As Webb's vision continues to explore the initial few hundred million years after the Big Bang, it collects more and better data about infant galaxies than any previous observatory. The question at hand is nothing less than our fundamental understanding of how the structured universe we know emerged from early chaos. Webb's initial discoveries could rewrite the opening chapters of cosmic history, impacting not only distant epochs and galaxies, but also our own existence in the familiar Milky Way. As JWST scientist Mark McCoffrian, a senior advisor for science and exploration at the European Space Agency, stated, You build these machines not to confirm the current view but to break it. You just don't know how they will break it. One method Webb uses to measure the distances of objects is similar to identifying the location of an ambulance by its siren. The siren sounds higher in pitch as it approaches and lower as it recedes. Similarly, the farther away a galaxy is, the faster it moves away from us, causing its light to stretch to longer wavelengths and appear redder. This degree of redshift is expressed as Z, indicating how long an object's light has traveled to reach us. One of the first papers on JWST data came from MIT cosmologist Rohan Naidu and his colleagues, whose search algorithm flagged a galaxy that appeared surprisingly bright and incredibly distant. Naidu named it Glass Z13, indicating an apparent distance with a redshift of 13, further than anything seen before. The galaxy's redshift was later revised to 12.4 and renamed Glass Z12. Other astronomers working on different JWST observations reported redshift values from 11 to 20, including one galaxy called CERS 1749 or CR2 Z17-1, whose light seems to have been emitted 13.7 billion years ago, just 220 million years after the Big Bang, a blink of an eye after the beginning of cosmic time itself. These potential detections suggest that the established LCDM story might be incomplete. Galaxies appear to have grown massive quickly in the early universe. You don't expect to see such massive galaxies, said Chris Lovell, an astrophysicist at the University of Portsmouth in England. In a November review, researchers examined simulations of galaxies under the LCDM model and found that JWST's early bright galaxies were much larger than those formed simultaneously in the simulations. Some astronomers and news outlets claimed JWST was breaking cosmology, but not everyone was convinced. One issue is that LCDM expectations aren't always clear. While dark matter and dark energy are straightforward, visible matter has complex interactions and behaviors, and nobody knows exactly what happened in the early years after the Big Bang. These turbulent early times must be approximated in computer simulations. Another issue is that it's challenging to determine the exact distances of galaxies. In the months following the first papers, the ages of some so-called high-redshift galaxies were revised. Some were reassigned to later stages of cosmic evolution due to updated telescope calibrations. Sewers 1749, for instance, is found in a region of the sky containing a cluster of galaxies whose light was emitted 12.4 billion years ago. Naidu says it's possible this galaxy is part of this cluster, a closer interloper that might be filled with dust that requires JWST's powerful capabilities to discern. JWST doesn't just detect starlight through photometry, measuring brightness, but also through spectroscopy, measuring light's frequencies. If a photometric observation is like a picture of a face in a crowd, a spectroscopic observation is like a DNA test revealing an individual's family ancestry. Naidu and others who observed large early galaxies measured redshift using brightness-based estimates, essentially looking at faces in the crowd with a good camera. This method is far from airtight. 
At a January meeting of the American Astronomical Society, astronomers suggested that perhaps half of the early galaxies seen with photometry alone might turn out to be more accurately measured with spectroscopy. By early December, astronomers announced that they had combined both methods for four galaxies. The JWST Advanced Deep Extragalactic Survey, Jade's team looked for galaxies whose infrared light spectra abruptly cut off at a specific frequency known as the Lyman break. This break occurs because hydrogen in the space between galaxies absorbs light. Due to the universe's ongoing expansion, the glow of distant galaxies shifts so that the frequency at the Lyman break moves as well. When a galaxy's light seems to drop off at longer wavelengths, it is farther away.